Welcome to SATCONS 101, an educational activity of the International Astronomical Union's Center for the Protection of the Dark and Quiet Sky from Satellite Constellation Interference, or CPS. This activity aims to promote factual understanding of large satellite constellations in order to help participants come to reasoned and informed opinions about this important social and technological issue. Today's topic is Impacts on Radio Astronomy. The Center's mission is to coordinate efforts and unify voices across the global astronomical community with regard to the protection of the dark and quiet sky from satellite constellation interference. My name is John Barentine, and I co-lead the Community Engagement Hub of CPS. My training is in optical and infrared astronomy, and my current professional work involves freelance consulting. Since 2019, I have worked on policy and advocacy issues around large satellite constellations. I will present to you on today's topic. These are the learning objectives of the SATCONS 101 curriculum. Participants will gain exposure to these ideas in the course of viewing all of the presentations in the series. Opportunities to learn more about any given topic will be offered in each module, as well as to contact the Center for further information. SATCONS 101 is a series of learning modules covering eight broad subject areas. Each module is a short, self-contained video presentation covering one of the subject areas. They can be viewed individually or in any combination up to the full set. Viewing all eight presentations constitutes exposure to the complete SATCONS 101 curriculum. Today, we will focus on the topic of impacts on radio astronomy. In the next few minutes, I will discuss each of the following elements that relate to the topic of this video. Radio astronomy studies the universe by using a kind of invisible light we experience as radio waves. Its energy is much lower than the kind of light we see with our eyes. Radio light is transmitted and received through the use of antennas rather than mirrors. Astronomers are interested in radio light because it provides unique information about the cosmos from the nearby solar system to the edge of the universe. We can use radio waves to learn about distant pulsars, regions where stars are forming, and supernova remnants, among other topics. While the Earth's atmosphere is opaque to other kinds of light, it is transparent to most radio light. That means that radio astronomers can use antennas on the ground to detect cosmic signals. Radio astronomy has an advantage in that sunlight, clouds, and rain do not affect observations. But ground-based sources of radio waves can interfere with their observations. Radio astronomy observatories are therefore sensitive to radio energy emitted from those sources. Like nighttime telescopes that sense visible light, radio telescopes are often built in very rural locations. This helps protect them from interference and allows astronomers to make very sensitive measurements. We use radio frequencies continuously in our daily lives. For example, in TV and radio broadcasting, satellite communications, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth communications. All require access to portions of the radio spectrum. At the national level, countries define the use of the radio spectrum the example here shows how the United States allocates the radio spectrum for different uses. At the international level, the International Telecommunications Union, or ITU, makes allocations. In the case of radio astronomy, there are some very important and narrow radio astronomy bands that are recognized for the exclusive use of radio astronomers. With advance of technology, such as more capabilities, faster communication, and new applications, the need for spectrum access increases. This in turn increases pressure on radio astronomy as new transmitters may use nearby frequency bands. But it is also balanced by cases where radio telescopes observe passively in nearby frequency bands allocated by the ITU for other purposes. This may include instances where those bands are allocated for use in satellite communications. 
In other parts of the spectrum of light, satellites can directly emit their own radiation. That is particularly true in the case of radio waves, which satellites used to communicate with the ground. Objects of interest to astronomers also emit faint radiation in this part of the spectrum. Telescopes sensitive to these radio signals are often built in very remote locations. This helps protect the radio telescopes from interference due to human-caused radio emissions. Everything from cell phones to electric appliances and even the spark plugs in automobiles generate radio noise. To preserve conditions for radio astronomy, international agreements protect parts of the spectrum. Countries set up radio quiet zones around observatories that reduce radio interference from local sources. These strategies have so far been effective in ensuring that astronomers can continue to pursue radio astronomy on the ground. Satellites present a special challenge to radio astronomy because of their location in space. Unlike ground-based sources of radio interference, satellites beam radio signals down almost everywhere. The idea of radio quiet zones does not extend into space. Instead, strong radio interference can come from many directions at once. There are two main ways in which radio transmissions from satellites can hinder radio astronomy. One way is by direct interference. In this case, radio signals from space fill the beam of a radio antenna. This is most relevant for dish-shaped antennas that tend to look at small parts of the sky at a time. Even weak signals can overwhelm the faint emissions that radio astronomers look for. If the strength of the signal is high enough, it can damage a sensitive radio receiver. But when these telescopes are not looking directly at satellites, the radio signals can still interfere. Directional radio antennas have some sensitivity at angles away from their main targets. Called side lobes, these extra regions of sensitivity can pick up satellite transmissions even on the opposite side of the sky. This makes the prospect of protecting radio telescopes from this kind of interference especially challenging. It is important to note that there are no frequency bands in which satellites and radio astronomy share allocations. Similarly, there are very few instances where these adjacent bands are assigned to the particular uses. Besides the strength of radio signals, radio astronomers also worry about the frequencies of those emissions. Some kinds of astronomical objects emit across many frequencies, while others emit only very narrowly. Certain frequencies are very important to astronomical research, so much so that international laws protect them. The radio part of the spectrum is subject to frequency allocations. Some frequencies are reserved for applications like telecommunication, while others are protected for radio astronomy. It is very important to respect these international allocations for all users. But often, even well-designed radio transmitters can emit signals out of band. That means that some of the radio power they emit is at frequencies other than those intended for broadcast. This can affect radio astronomy if those out-of-band signals fall in the range of protected frequencies. For satellites, this can be difficult to predict. And as the number of satellites increases, the effect is expected to become more significant. Some kinds of radio astronomy telescopes do not use the familiar dish-shaped antennas. Interference with their observation is especially challenging because these telescopes see a lot of the sky at once. An example of this kind of antenna is the design used in observations of the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. The CMB originated in the very early universe and the distribution of the CMB on the sky has been described as the universe's baby picture. Given the expansion of the universe over billions of years since the Big Bang, the energy of the CMB is now very low. We detected it at microwave frequencies around those used in many modern telecommunications systems. The design of antenna arrays needed to detect these weak microwaves renders them especially vulnerable to satellite interference. There may soon be so many satellites in orbit that they constitute a bright radio foreground for these telescopes. This may make the task of observing the cosmic microwave background from the ground difficult or even impossible. 
Thank you for watching this presentation. For additional information about this and other subjects related to large satellite constellations and their impacts on astronomy in the space environment, contact the center at the address or website shown here.